Yes, I actually created a thousand planets. Or more specifically, my computer did. And all I had to do was click play and write over a thousand lines of code. But anyway, let's start at the beginning. So I'm making a kind of open world space game, but in order for the player to feel like they can roam around, the universe needs to be pretty big. And since I'm a programmer, I don't want to create all of those worlds by hand. Instead, I'd like to be able to generate a planet based on some different parameters. And then if I randomize those parameters, I can create as many planets as I want. The first thing I need to do is create a mesh for the planet. Now, Unreal does have a built-in sphere mesh, but it's not very good. If you want to generate a texture to cover it, you have to figure out how to generate a texture that will wrap around the globe, kind of the opposite of making a map of the Earth. And that means dealing with a ton of distortion. You know what shape is easy to texture? A cube. On a cube, all of the sides are square, so we can simply slap one texture on each side, and we're good to go. Now, a cube isn't exactly a sphere, but we'll deal with that later. To make a cube, we just have to make a few quads. And a quad is just four vertices in a square shape connected together into two triangles like this. If we add a variable for the number of quads on each side, and then simply create four vertices and two triangles for each quad, we get a plane of adjustable quality. And if we create six of those and then space them out, we have a cube. Now, unfortunately, there seem to be some seams all over the face, probably because we're creating four new vertices for every single quad. But if we're in any row other than the first, these two vertices have already been created. And if we're in any column other than the first, these two vertices have already been created. So for most of these quads, we only need to add one vertex, and we can reuse all of the others. Now, figuring out where in the array those vertices we want to reuse are was obviously very easy. Okay, fine, it was torture. And I wouldn't even wish it on the guy who writes commit messages like this. Okay, maybe I would. Now, to turn this into a sphere, we can normalize each vertex, so they're all exactly one unit away from the center of the shape. And then we can multiply them by a given radius value, and we have our finished cube sphere thing. And it only took two days. Now, since our goal as programmers is to do about 10% of the work, let's use Perlin Noise to help us out. If you don't know, Perlin Noise is an amazing function that allows you to put in a position, for example, the 3D coordinates of our vertex, and it will output a fairly random value. But instead of all the values being jumbled up like this, they transition smoothly from 0 to 1, like this. So all we have to do is create a texture of whatever resolution, loop over each pixel in the texture, and set that pixel to be the value of the Perlin noise at that location. And now our sphere has a texture, but it's not very interesting. So let's add a few more layers of Perlin noise. And for each layer, we'll multiply the input position by 2, then 4, then 8, and so on, and we'll multiply the output noise value by 0.5, then 0.25, then 0.125, and so on. So each layer is half as wide and half as tall as the previous layer. And this will give us some random but fairly detailed variation that looks pretty good. In fact, if we throw a blank sphere under it and set the opacity to be the same as the texture, so black is completely invisible, we get some pretty good clouds for our planet. If we want to make a planet, though, we really need some textures. Perlin noise is great, but it tends to look a bit samey after a while, like code without any syntax highlighting. So instead of directly using the Perlin noise as a texture, let's take two textures that are tileable, set them to grayscale, and blend between them using the Perlin noise. Since Perlin noise is so smooth, you can't really tell that it's two different textures. You'll just see a jumble of features from each image. Basically, all of the dirt and rock textures I've found so far have worked really well for the planets. And since that layer is grayscale, we can multiply it by any color. So if we generate some more Perlin noise, we can add two colors and have each texture be one of those colors. But Perlin noise is seeded, which means in addition to the position, you also give it a number as a seed. And a different seed will give you a different noise value. So if we set the seed of the color noise and the texture noise to be the same, then each texture will have the color mapped exactly on top of it. But if we set the texture noise and the color noise to have two different seeds, the colors and textures won't be aligned and the planet will look really good. And now that we can generate one planet, we can create another script that will generate as many planets as we want. And that's how we get a thousand planets. And we obviously need an epic... <laughs> Thank you. 
and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out.